Hello everybody, and in today's video, we are going to be building and testing an abort system for Starship in Kerbal Space Program. Now, the main objective of this abort system is going to be able to successfully carry out an abort on the pad at maximum dynamic pressure or max Q, as well as during a potential failed landing burn. So let's get straight into the building. So. Uh, we do need to, obviously, first construct our abort system. Uh, as you do probably know, Starship has no official, like, uh, crew rescue abort system, uh, as most launch vehicles uh, typically do. Like, you know, the Saturn V has that big, a lot of vehicles, but, you know, you have the big abort tower, and if something's going wrong, the engines fire, and oh my gosh, the capsule is, you know, saved, and no one dies, right? And, you know, Dragon and Starliner, they have, uh, they have thrusters in the bottom, as well as uh, the New Shepard capsule. Um, so, uh, Starship is actually unique in the fact that it, uh, it does not plan on having any sort of abort system, as how would it, you know, it's kind of a weird kind of shape, you know, where would you abort, right? Uh, Space Shuttle also didn't have an abort system, Space Shuttle was, well, that was uh, pretty dangerous, it had, like, the SRBs of death, like, right next to it in the, you know, <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, so I decided, hey, let's try and make an abort system for Starship, so, my initial plan, uh, was to, as you can see here, I have a little piston here, so I was initially concerned that the, um, at the, that, uh, that the, the, um, the nose cone was slightly clipped into the, uh, the, like, the separation point between the main, I guess, fuselage area and the nose cone, uh, that the fairings were clipped into each other, and if I just tried to directly decouple them, they would have, like, crackened out and exploded, so I put a, um, I put a little piston in the main cargo bay of Starship with a decoupler attached. So in theory, the way this should work is I have the, the traverse rate turned all the way up on the piston, so the piston will push the nose cone directly ray out, and then it will decouple, and then the engines will go and take it, you know, into a safe, a safe distance. So originally, just to try and, I tried to do a, like, like a low weight solution initially, uh, which is with the Bobcat engine. Um, so uh, we're gonna put two bobcats in, which give us four bells. You know, obviously, it's only one comp only one set of turbo pumps, so it's really only two engines. Uh, so that was my initial plan. So we're gonna go ahead and take this thing out to the pad and do our abort test number one. Oh my gosh, guys! So throttling up, and I pushed the thing to extend the piston. Nothing happened. And then I just went ahead and decoupled it. So there it goes. It's been pushed out. It is now in the air. And wow, that thing is. That thing is going very, 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 very slow. That is slow. That is very slow. Um, and then we go and we do a relay here. This is our landing system. But oh no, we don't have the TWR. And ooh, that's not good. So th yeah, those Bobcat engines do not have the thrust required to uh, to 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 to, uh, to pull the thing safely away, especially during like at max Q, and there's a lot of uh, thrust from super heavy, and during a relay when you really got to get out of there quick because hey, the ground's here, you know, um, <laughs> you're gonna crash soon. So uh, we need to stop out the engines for 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 vectors. So yeah, vector gang, vector gang. So another change I made is I realized that that piston was literally not doing anything, and it managed to decouple absolutely no problem without. Uh, the piston extending because it got stuck somehow. I think it was actually because of the fairing clipping. Uh, I actually decided to remove the piston. So, hey, you know, no part is the best part, right? You know, Elon quote. So, um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and uh, swap out the uh, the two uh, Bobcats for a two vector engines in that in that area. Um, I would like to quickly, by the way, guys, I'd like to do the plugs uh, today. Uh, thank you, everyone who has subscribed and stuff. I have to quickly do this plugs because we're going to go ahead for another test flight very soon. Um, so, subscribe. We're actually really close to 10,000 subscribers. This recording this video on the 8th of April, and I really want to get there by uh, April 20th, you know, 4 20, 42, also the other thing. But, um, so, you know, that'd be awesome. Goals. Uh, we also like become member, all the stuff. That's the end of my plugs. All right, let's test out. Thank you, Evan, by the way. Really, though. Um, <laughs> let's test out the, the vector system. And and boom! Oh, that is much, 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 much quicker, much smoother. So I'm gonna fire the vectors for five seconds. I have to make now we're a safe distance away from the uh, from from the rest of the stack. I do not deploy or activate the fins. I just leave them extended. And uh, we're gonna come in for a nice little landing on on the helipad on top of the VAB. And we have obviously plenty of thrust with the vectors to uh, yeah. I also uh, put some pistons to act as landing legs be kind of weird to land on vectors you know in, in ksp you can land on engines absolutely no problem but you know you have to kind of keep this somewhat realistic i guess 
Uh, so here it is, coming down for a nice little landing. So, all right, so that is objective one of three. That was the paddleboard. So the paddleboard was uh, by far the easiest. So we're gonna have to like gradually work our way up. So the, the second one in terms of, in, in terms of difficulty is the max cue board. So the max cue board is really difficult because it or it, it has it's, it's more difficult than the um, than the paddleboard because it has the super heavy firing. So you need a lot of thrust to you know escape and also aerodynamics and stuff. And you also have to escape the like the crashing rocket, so you want to like not get hit by the rocket that's, you know, so. Um, here it goes, here's our attempt number one uh, at using our, our, our board system that we just showed uh, for, for Max Q. Our Max Q is at around 10 kilometers, so I have the footage sped up. Once you get to 10 kilometers, I'll slow it back down and you'll be able to see the abort take place. So here we go, back to one time speed and abort will happen just any, oh my gosh, abort, abort, there it goes. Oh, and oh, oh, uh oh, go, please go, uh, oh, that, and then, oh, that's just, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's probably not what you want, uh, so, uh, yeah, issue, we did not have enough thrust, we had barely enough thrust to escape, and in, in reality, if that rocket was, like, blowing up or something, you needed to get out of there, like, right now, yeah, you would have been deaded, so we are gonna need to make some changes, so I, uh, the, really, all, I just added four vectors. I, I thought maybe eight, eight, six, but that would have added an unnecessary amount of waste. So we're gonna add, uh, add up to just uh, to four vectors, um, and we'll see, we'll see if that actually will make it make the difference. Um, by the way, some of you may be wondering, like, hey, where does the fuel come from for the support system? So um, the way I have the Starship set up is it has a header tank in the nose cone, which uh, is where the fuel for the landing burn will come from, as well as a header tank in the main area. Here you go for our, our test number two, um, and that's where it gets its fuel from. So in reality, if you want, if you wanted to implement a system like this, you basically need to redesign the entire Starship because only the uh, oxygen header tank is in the nose cone. So like you wouldn't have anywhere, you wouldn't be able to fire your engines to do this type of board system. You you need to move the methane one in, and that would uh, screw up your weights and stuff. But you, it would really be quite, quite the redesign. But I don't know. I don't know if it'd be worth it. Um, either way, um, we're gonna get uh, get approaching Max Q here for our second abort test of our Starship at Max Q, and there goes the abort lag spike, and there it goes. Oh, that is a much cleaner separation as the uh, the rest of the Starship will go ahead and basically explode itself. There is it. Uh, it crashes into itself, and there it goes. That's actually kind of cool. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to try and point radial in. Try and scrub off our horizontal velocity because yes, we are going to be returning back to the KSC uh, at the Max Q board. We actually have enough aerodynamic control with those front fins to actually return back to the KSC. You don't have to do a water landing because you know then you don't have to rescue the crew and you don't need it. Simpler, right? Epic, much wow. So here we go, and we are going to be just just for the funds coming in for a helipad landing on top of the VAB because. Why not? Bab is fun. One thing that actually I didn't realize is with those extra two vectors, it added quite a bit of weight at the back, so it was a little bit more difficult to control than the two vector version, but uh, this version uh, worked worked a lot better. So we're going to be actually landing this thing quite similar to a normal Starship. You do a little relight, and then you do a little flip maneuver, and bring it in for a landing. Because this thing weighs so little, um, we actually have quite a bit of Delta V, uh, so yeah, we have time to kind of dilly-dally here and bring it in for a nice landing on the helipad for the second time in the video. Second helipad, here it comes, and... Oh, oh, hey, touchdown! Welcome down! And now it is time to test out the system on the more, most difficult, yes, the most difficult abort, and most dangerous abort, which is the the relight abort. So this would be if something were to go seriously wrong during the flip maneuver and like like if it SN9 did we had to like get out of there. This is this is this is the see how it works. So we're at below two kilometers I'm gonna chop it down to one time speed. I'm gonna be relighting all three engines at the around 700 meter mark and then gonna do the flip maneuver. So here are around through one kilometer gonna get ready to do that relight and one engine uh oh uh oh, oh, the other engine, oh no, they're not working, oh gosh, oh no, it's dying, abort, abort, there it goes, oh gosh, oh, there goes Starship, it's crashed, oh my, and it did it, yay. So, yeah, the power of those those four vectors is really what you need to be able to escape, you know, a dying Starship like that. 
Uh, you basically, the way you do is you just support, and then it's like, straight up, get away, get away. And you also need to be able to get a little horizontal speed so you can actually clear the debris of the starship. But then, uh, then we can come in for a landing, and there it is. There is starship down, and there is an abort system. What do you think? Good, bad, maybe so. I don't know. Comment section, ho oh, ho, and members. All right, so there's my little transition, my end screen here. I guess not really an end screen, but here's all the members. Thank you, everyone, for becoming a channel member, and here is the Patreon. Thank you to everyone has become a Patreon. But that's going to do it for me today. I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time, and bye.